We're here, ladies and gentlemen. The start of the 2024-2025 season is just one sleep away. Just one more sleep. At the start of every season, I have to give my NBA standings predictions. Today, we got Eastern Conference. Tomorrow, we got Western Conference. The link is in the description for you to go to our site that we created, enjoypredictions.com, to give your predictions. But before we get into the standings, there's a few things I got to get off. Number one. Uh, this is my most disliked video every single year. And the reason for that is because everybody is really optimistic about their favorite team. You should be. This is the start of the season. If you're not optimistic right now, you're never going to be optimistic about the team. So I might have your favorite team a spot or two too low. At the end of the day, these are subjective opinions. And I don't do these standings in order to be right. I more do it to have a snapshot of what my opinions about every team is going into the start of the season. At the end of the day, I'm going to miss a lot. I already went through last year's. I missed a lot. It's just a way for us to start talking through these things as we start through the season. It's also impossible to predict because we don't know who's going to get injured. Who would have expected Joel Embiid was going to miss the last, what, two months of the season and the 76ers who are always a top four seed would be in the play-in? Who would have expected a Pascal Siakam trade to the Indiana Pacers? There are so many different things we do not know. That's the beauty of the game. And I also don't want it to be very uniform. It's easy for me to just look at last year's stands and be like, yep, that'll be the same. Yep, that'll be the same. Yep, I'm going to take some swings. I'm, I might strike out. <laughs> I, I legitimately might strike out. But at the end of the day, I think it's fun to say, hey, I believe this team can make the jump. Nobody really expected the Orlando Magic to make the jump, right? Well, there should be a team or two that take a jump. So I'm going to try to predict those teams too. Enough of me yapping. Let's get into it. Again, link is in the description to the site for you to play along. Also, link is in the description to uh, my podcast, Small Ball Kenny Beach, and we drop an episode every Friday. Uh, this season is going to be lit. All right, let's get into it. So, I haven't thought about this too, too much, but I'm already thinking about uh, some teams have to be in the plan. There are a lot of good teams out east and out west. Like, obviously, the west is more stacked, but the Eastern Conference ain't no slouch either. So I think the easiest thing we could do is say, hey, Boston Celtics will be the one seed. Even with Porzingis being out with an injury, I do believe, I think they were 21-8 and eight without Porzingis last year. I still trust that this team's going to get a ton of regular season wins. They have a good identity, that they're well coached, they're very disciplined as a team, and I think that they should still dominate the Eastern Conference in the regular season, at least. Um, and then we get to the bottom, right? These are the teams that will be in the Ace, Ace uh, Bay League, Cooper Flag sweepstakes. I don't, I don't know if y'all seen the highlights from their first two games. Both of them look disgustingly talented. So I think that those teams are going to be like the Washington Wizards should be the worst team maybe in the entire association. And then I think the Brooklyn Nets are not going to be that far in front of them. Shout out to those two teams. Hopefully y'all end up winning the lottery and get your fans uh, back on your side. Not that the fans have, have walked away from you, but just like having that really big piece that one of the generational type players is going to be pretty dope. Um, other team, look, look, can I sort them in here? No, I can't. Other teams I'm thinking about for missing the play-in completely. And these are just the teams I'm thinking. I'm not saying these are teams that are going to be there. Atlanta, Sh Charlotte, Chicago, Detroit, and Toronto. That's five teams for three spots. So two of those teams will be a playing team at the minimum. I think the Bulls will be bad this season. I already made a video about it. We should be fun. In the, in the uh, preseason, we had a high pace and a high level of three-point shooting. I'm excited about that. But I still don't believe we're going to win a lot of games because our defense is not going to be very good. I don't expect us to be a surprise team like I saw some people on Twitter say because they watched a few preseason games. Uh -uh. Maybe the Bulls are a team that's 13th. Even though we're perennially a, a playing team, last year we were one of the most clutch teams in basketball, and Mr. Clutch himself, DeMar DeRozan, no longer plays for our team. So you know what? I'm going to be safe here, and I don't want the Bulls to be very good. I want in on that Ace Bailey Cooper flag sweepstakes with our top 10 protected pick. So I'm going to say the Bulls are about 13. Uh, I'm going to say the Bulls are 12, and you know what? My 13 is going to be Detroit. Even though I do believe Detroit is going to be way better than 14 wins this season, I think that the 13th seed will probably get you, what, 26, 27 wins, and that's a successful season if you double your win total from last year. Uh, you know what? I think... I think Detroit might have a higher ceiling than the Bulls, but I think the Bulls have a higher floor, if that makes sense, right? Because if one individual player on the Bulls get injured, let's say it's Zach Levine or Kobe White or Josh Giddey, any of those guys, one of them dudes, one of the star dudes get injured, I think the team can sustain itself in being bad, but okay enough to win some games. Hypothetically, knock on wood, I don't want this to happen because I, I am rooting for this man and I already made a video about it. If Kay Cunningham were to miss some time, I don't believe that the, ball, the, the Detroit Pistons could sustain and win a few games here or there. So... 
I'm going to go with the higher ceiling. I'm going to go with the higher ceiling. Again, we're talking about the 12 or 13. It don't really matter, but I'm going to go with the higher ceiling and say the Detroit Pistons will be better than the Bulls again, give us a higher position to get Ace Bailey Cooper flag. And then who was the last team? I made a video talking about how invested I am in the Charlotte Hornets. So I think I have to have the Charlotte Hornets, at least in the plan after making that video. I think the Atlanta Hawks, I might fall for it again. I think the Hawks are at least an okay NBA team. Um, now well-constructed, uh, decently constructed. Toronto, Mazai Ujiri, and Yaka Pertle, all these people had told us that they're in a rebuilding year. I think Scotty's going to be phenomenal. I think RJ has been great. I think Quickly has been great. I think I think in preseason, Grady Dick looks amazing. So it's hard for me to even put them on the outside looking in, but it might be best for their organization to be that, right? I think they already gave up. The, the pick that they gave up for Yaka Pertle has already conveyed. So if I'm not mistaken, their own, they own their own picks from this point on. So it might make sense, again, this is what Yaka Pertle and Masai Jiria basically sets us, to not be as good as maybe you should be. So I'm going to say Toronto's going to be the 11 seed. And these are the 10 teams that will be making the postseason. Not the play, the playoffs, because I'm one of those dudes that say you got to be in a series to make the playoffs with the postseason nonetheless. Okay, let's go back to the top. What team do I trust to be the 2 seed? Here are my options. Cleveland. Um, Milwaukee, New York, Philly. Those are my four teams that I believe have a chance to be the two seed. And I think that I'm going to put New York back in that two seed spot. Uh, they made all the adjustments. Even Mikhail Bridges having that new looking jump shot. I do believe they're going to be good enough with Jalen Brunson and all of the guys to take a two seed. Shout out to Deuce McBride, a guy that I believe in very heavily. I think he's going to be amazing this season. So I'm going to put them at the two seed. Now with the three seed. Like I said, I want to take some swings here. So I think uniformly you would say like Philly or, uh-oh, how do I get him out of there? Uh-oh. Did I set them up? I can't get them out of there? Uh-oh. Um, I think you would think of teams like Philly. You would think of teams like Milwaukee. But you know what team? I'm going to have to drop Philly for now. Let's put Philly all the way down here just because I didn't mean to put them in there. I think a team. Again, we're just talking about regular season wins. I think the Cleveland Cavaliers will have a ton of regular season wins. They won 50 games two years ago, and then what, 49 the year last year, even with all the injuries. I think that with them having, let's say, 10% more injury luck and a new coach that they should win a ton of regular season games uh and again that's a swing because historically they're like a 4c 5c i think they could be a 3c and again the seeding could be a half a game difference like we saw last year a half a game was a difference between being a play-in team and a playoff team last season um so it could be that again then we get to okay the 4c philly might be in the conversation not might be philly should be in the conversation with the 4c so i'll bring them back up i'm not saying that is who i'm gonna pick there um they have, what, 16 back-to-backs this season, and Joel Embiid has already told the world that he's not playing in back-to-backs anymore. So let's say you got eight games off rip that Joel Embiid will not participate in at minimum eight games. And last year, they weren't very good without Joel Embiid. Now they have Paul George to kind of help out Tyrese Maxey in those non-Joel Embiid games. Um, this is tough because Milwaukee, even with them having um, all of the turmoil, Adrian Griffin getting fired halfway through the season, um, Damian Lillard and Giannis not meshing perfectly. They still were really good regular season team. They had really bad transition defense for half of the year and still walked out with wins because they're just that talented. Just got an update this morning that Chris Middleton is going to miss at least the start of the NBA season. Um, a lot of these injury reports nowadays are very ambiguous. So the start of the NBA season could literally mean one game or it could mean a week. It could mean two. I don't really know. They say he's still rehabilitating that those uh, ankles and he hasn't played any in the preseason season so i'm gonna assume that it's gonna be more than a single game but i don't want to assume that it's more than a few weeks i'm gonna put milwaukee at four. Oh, this feels weird to have the 76ers at five and it's gonna be it's gonna feel even weirder because two of the darlings from last season the indiana pa i clicked it again the indiana paces in the orlando magic at least one of these teams have to be a playing team at least one of these teams have to be a playing team because I'm a believer in the Miami Heat this season. Like I said, I'm taking some swings. I'm swinging and saying the Miami Heat avoid the play-in and they make the playoffs. Jimmy Butler is um, locked in again. You saw he played every single game of the preseason. No stars should be doing that, first of all. But he heard the noise or the conversations between Pat Riley saying that I'm not giving you this contract if you don't play. I think Bam Adebayo is going to be better this season with him incorporating the three-point shot. Their offense in the preseason, again, you, you want to take with a grain of salt, but I think schematically the offense is different. Where in the preseason, it was so much five-out offense. Now 
now that Bam Adebayo is stretching the floor, and I think that can benefit their team a ton. I don't believe they're going to be a super fast team, but I do believe they're going to get a lot more three-point shot ups, um, way more than what they did last season, and that should help their offense. We know that their defense is going to be one that's going to be decent because even last year, with all of the injuries that they went through, they were still a top, I want to say, seven defense, and that's a lot of Bam Adebayo, obviously, and Hayward Highsmith, and all of these random role players that stepped up. I'm trusting the Miami Heat to get closer to what they were two years ago, two years ago, three years ago versus what they were last year. Is that crazy? Maybe. So, yeah, that puts us with Indiana and Orlando as playing teams. And that doesn't make sense to me. The Orlando Magic were phenomenal last year, one of the best defenses in basketball. Their offense has a, has a lot to be desired. But I trust Paolo Bancaro being better this year than last year. And that's saying a lot because the guy was stellar last year. Um, Indiana Pacers have a full offseason of Pascal Siakam and the team being together. So it feels weird for them to be a playing team, man. It feels really weird for them to be a playing team. But at the end of the day, there has to be two. It has to be two. So is there anybody above them that I'm, I can convince myself to drop? Even with Joel Embiid missing whatever amount of games, what were they, 31-8 and eight when he played last season in the regular season? That's a crazy record. Now they have Paul George. The Milwaukee Bucks, I already talked you through it. The Damian Lillard and Giannis, whether they're gelling or not, are still dominant players that can win you basketball games. I know that they're changing their defense schematically where – um, Brooke Lopez is not dropping every single time. I don't know exactly what that will look like in the regular season, but it's still just a team that I trust to win a bunch of regular season games. Same thing with the Cavs, same thing with the Knicks, and same thing with the Celtics. So that, that means that we, we are here. I don't like it, but it has to happen, bro. It has to happen. Yikes, man. And who's going to be better between the two? Again, it could be a half game difference. I'm going to say you're going to go from what? We're the Toronto Raptors, I mean, I mean, the Orlando Magic with a 5C last season, we're going to drop to 8? So, yeah, they were a 5C last year. The Pacers were a 6C. So, the Pacers being a 7C is, well, they all, okay, okay. So, last year, the Magic Pacers and 76ers all had the exact same record. But because the Pacers and the Magic held the tiebreaker, then they were not a playing team while the 76ers were. I think that could still happen again. Right, where maybe these three teams have the same exact record again. And, and and two of them have to be a plan. You know what I'm saying? And even last year, the Miami Heat, who were the eighth seed, were one game behind. So it's uh, it was all jumbled up. And I think this could be another season where it's all jumbled up. I think parity below the Boston Celtics is real. This is tough, man. Because I, I am I truly am a believer in the Pacers. So I'm trying to find a way to get them higher. And the only thing I could think about is doing this. But does that does that matter? I like I, I already tried. I already convinced myself that the Heat. Okay, let's let's get these nine and ten. I think Atlanta. Then I think Charlotte. Cool. Um, this man. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I've been here for <laughs> a long time trying to figure this out. Okay, so let, I'm. This is gonna sound stupid, but let's let's think worst case scenario about every team. Worst case scenario for the Boston Celtics is, is like. I don't think there is. I'm sorry. I'm, I, is that glazing? I don't really know. I, the Celtics are a very well put together team, and they got all the pieces to continue to be regular season dominant. Worst case scenario for the Knicks is like Carl Anthony Towns' defense as a full time center doesn't translate, and Mikael Bridges' jump shot never comes back. The Cleveland Cavaliers is that the the front court doesn't fit, and that the back court doesn't fit. And the reason they were still successful last season is because Darius Garland was out. Not, be, you know what I'm saying? You, okay. Worst case scenario for the Milwaukee Bucks: defense doesn't hold up. Chris Middleton never is healthy. And if Chris Middleton is never healthy, then it's like they drop. And they, they might they might drop a few different times if Chris Middleton is never healthy. You know what I'm saying? But even last year without Chris Middleton, they were 18 and 9. They were <laughs> last year without Chris Middleton, they, they were 18 and 9. So they were still an elite basketball team without Chris Middleton. Um worst case scenario for Indiana Pacers, I don't know. I don't know. I just Ah, oh, I'm so frustrated. This is so crazy because I said I want to take some swings, right? The the Miami Heat was supposed to be my swing. But now I'm convincing myself that they're not, they shouldn't even be a seven seed. I feel like I should just hit publish and say, we run. I'm not, I don't think I'm ever going to feel confident about it. Even when we go to the Western Conference, I don't think I'm ever going to feel confident about the standings because there are that many great teams out there. I'm Henson. Boom. This is what we're looking at for the rest. <laughs> this is what we're looking at, y'all. The only ones I feel comf comfortable with are like my one seed, two seed, my 14, 15. Welcome to the NBA season, man. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Again, let me know what I got wrong because um, I'm sure it's a lot in your opinion. That's completely, completely okay. Hell, I'm looking at it right now, and I don't feel good about it. So how can I expect you to feel good about it? We will come back to this video at the end of the season, see what we were right about, see what we were wrong about. Again, who knows?